Hey guys, it's Darren, Bryce, and Marty, and we're coming at you with some new stuff. Check it out. Now let's start off this Fusion 360 update with some sheet metal enhancements. I just finished sketching out my profile for my first flange. Now let's go use the flange command. If you pay close attention, when the flange command results in creating a new sheet metal component, Fusion 360 will prompt you to pick the sheet metal rule right within the flange command. Previously, we would have had to do this first in the new component command in this secret handshake. But that was an extra step and hard to remember, so we eliminated that portion of the workflow so you can design sheet metal components faster. Next, let's add a few flanges to these edges. The main output for sheet metal components is the flat pattern. Unfortunately, sometimes when I would go to flatten a sheet metal component, it wouldn't flatten. A majority of the time, this is caused because of self-intersecting flanges. Previously, it was quite difficult to know when self-intersecting flanges occurred. But don't worry, we added a collision detection while in the flange command. Fusion 360 will flag a warning message if you create a self-intersecting flange. Also, flanges that self-intersect will highlight yellow in the timeline. Well, before we get to the next enhancement, I have a few tricks to show. I only designed half of the sheet metal component, so I could take advantage of the symmetry of this V12 engine. Currently, I'm in the sheet metal workspace, but we can leverage features from the modeling workspace even though this is a sheet metal component. In this case, we can mirror the sheet metal body and combine the two so it's one sheet metal body. And of course, it will still flatten. Now that we are in the flat pattern, we would like to send this out to get cut on the water jet. Previously, we had to basically jump through hoops to send out a DXF. Well, not anymore. Now you can export out the DXF straight from the flat pattern. If your machine doesn't support splines, Fusion 360 will automatically convert splines into polylines. Fusion 360 will separate outer profiles, interior profiles, bends, and bend extents into different layers. Exporting out a DXF is a must when sending to other third-party software but I just got a call from the team saying they needed this part for a prototype immediately. Luckily, Fusion 360 doesn't stop at sheet metal design to flat pattern, but it's the complete solution to help from sheet metal design to manufacture. Once we're in the CAM workspace, we can now program this part to be cut on our water jet. In this update, we can now select bend lines within the 2D profile operation to etch, which will make it easier for my team to bend the final part. Now let's switch gears and take a look at some of the modeling enhancements. Let's start by creating a custom thread for this new eco-friendly bottle. I'm going to create a sweep, but first I will need to create a profile and a path. For the path, I will need to create a helix. In this case, we can use an add-in created by our own Patrick Rainsbury. Check the description for this link to download the add-in. This add-in will create a helix where you can define the radius, pitch, and number of revolutions. In addition, you can specify the resolution, which will change the number of points the helix curve is interpolated between. Now that our path is created, we can start working on our profile. In this case, we will use a plane along path to create our sketch plane. Now let's jump ahead a bit so we can start to create our sweep now. Previously, when we swept a profile like this around a path that changes rapidly, it was hard to control the twist of the profile as it moved along the path. Now in both the solid and surface sweep, we can change the type to path plus guide surface. This will lock the orientation of the profile based on the normal direction of the guide surface. Now that makes it easy to control this sweep. Well those were a few of the nuggets in this Fusion 360 update that I had to show. Now let's pass it to Aaron to continue showing some other gems. Great stuff Bryce. But now it's my turn to demonstrate new features with this incredible model Patel contributed to the Fusion Gallery, which we'll be linking in the description below. Anyway, to kick it off, let's see how we can use the new Forward Create Construction Geometry even easier. For those of you that didn't realize, you can now turn on or off the Construction Geometry toggle before you create sketch entities. And now you can do it even easier because the x keyboard will switch that option on or off with ease. Watch as I add the center line for this eventual revolve, and then close the profile without needing to jump into the sketch palette to turn that option on or off. Just X, Line, X, and we have a pulley made in no time. Jumping into the cam housing assembly, let's illustrate its disassembly with a nice animation. You can see I have a couple of steps already, but next I want to pull the camshaft bearing and pulley up and out from the rest of the design. This was made much easier in this release because of what we're calling compound transforms. 
When I first pull it up, all is well. But when I want to pull it out, that's when the trail line illustrates the problem. Instead of doing the movement in the way I created it, it will take the shortest path between the start and end point. But when I use the new toggle to split the transforms, it'll now do it in two steps. In addition, the two distinct actions show up in the timeline, allowing me to add a pause between the movements. The trail lines themselves have been improved as well. Familiar manipulators are added to the ends of the trail lines to allow you to extend them to your liking. With trail lines still on our minds, let's switch to a drawing of the intake. You might notice right away that you can now see these animation trail lines in the drawing views. This is particularly helpful when trying to communicate an assembly via an exploded view. And if you took the time to add them to the animation, it makes sense that you'd want to use them here too. And on the next sheet, the detail of the scoop, I'll demonstrate another incredible addition to this update. Right now, the bottom of the scoop is actually modeled closed, which is terrible for the engine's performance, but great for our computer because it helps us avoid the hundreds of small perforations that actually allow the air to pass through. Luckily, we can now see and use sketches in the drawing environment, so even though this was modeled without the perforations, we can now show, dimension, annotate, and see those in the drawing environment. And I'm sure everyone watching this can think of other cases where being able to see those sketches would have helped you out of a bind. Speaking about binds, being able to make all these drawings without having an option to print was definitely one. But I'm thrilled to say that we now have an ability to print drawings. Thanks for all of you that asked and voted for this ability, which is probably every Fusion user ever. When you go to use this, you'll see familiar options like selecting which printer to use and whether or not you want to print all pages, a single page, or a range. Good stuff. My last section has to do with simulation, where there are some seriously beneficial ads to this release. And because this block assembly is comprised of almost 100 models, the first thing I might want to do is simplify. As I start this process, I'll remove the biggest components so I can start to see the internals in what I want to simulate, the crankshaft with conrods. Seasoned simulation vets can tell you that the method to focus on those parts was altered when suppress unselected went away. There was a fix, but it was a bit of a rigmarole. But now you'll find a familiar option, remove all but selected. What it also does that I appreciate is it groups all those remove features together in a timeline, much better than having the timeline overrun with over 30 different remove features. Further along, I want to deal with the interferences inherent to the bolts, gaskets, and other pieces of this larger puzzle. Of course, we can use the interference command to find these, but now I can not only use it to locate interferences, but I can also remove those interferences. Simply toggle the target and tool to see what makes the most sense, then click OK to perform all the combined cuts that will resolve this. Very nice improvement there. In addition, but not covered here, are some new report options for those nonlinear studies. Make sure to read Kaching's blog to learn more about those. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. In the CAM workspace, we've added something that's been requested since I can remember. Form tools. The form mill command is in the manage section of the CAM toolbar and means anyone can now create a tool with a custom profile. Just sketch half the tool profile and make sure the CAM workspace is in millimeters during the creation of the tool. We're working on getting this into inches as well, so this is just a temporary workaround. I'll just select the profile of the tool, the center axis, make sure the red arrow is pointing towards the tip of the tool, and select the control point. The new form tool will show up in the document library, and you can use the normal management options to save it to any library. The control point is used to generate the toolpath, so to machine this groove and face, I'll make the toolpath one millimeter below the contour selection. And with a quick simulation, we're good to go. Switching gears to Fusion 360 in a browser, in addition to a number of fixes, we've added some features that you might have been missing. You can now show and hide bodies using the light bulb toggle in the browser, as well as in the context menu. While sketching, the context menu now supports constraints, just like in Fusion 360. For circles and arcs, there's also an option to toggle between radius or diameter dimension. Last but not least, the break and trim sketch commands are now supported. The context menu now also contains repeat of the last command for you power users, so you can quickly access the last command with just a right click. 
Oh, file print and drawing, so excited about that. As well as exporting out DXFs in sheet metal flat patterns, super cool. Yeah. And if you guys missed Autodesk University, check out the description below. We'll link to some videos and classes. Check it out. Thanks for watching. See ya. Cool.